Hi everybody, happy 2020. It's the Soap Man and it is time to make some soap. So, you're overhead, you're staring straight down into the crock pot. I bet you can guess what I'm doing. I'm doing hot process today. If you're new to hot process, this is a good tutorial. I post all of my videos as a tutorial because I've learned so much here, I like to pass that on. Okay, that being said, if you're new to hot process, this will be a good tutorial for you. There are differing variations. Not There's not really a gold standard. This is the way I prefer to do it. It's the way it works for me. I generally do just one color. I have done like different colors before. It's kind of hard to do with hot process. I generally do one color and then I add embeds into it. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Since I'm just doing one color, I go ahead and put my color right into the oils and cook it in there. <clears throat> my friend Lisa from Blossom and Birch Soap gave me several micas to try. You might not be able to see this one. This is Firefly Mica from Nurture Soap. It's a really vibrant yellow. They recommend one to two teaspoons per pound, which would be three to six teaspoons for this. I'm going to kind of compromise and go with five because I want this to be really nice and vibrant. And the micas that I have used in the past have always survived the hot process cook. And it kind of makes sense because if you let your soaps gel like I do, gel phase, a full gel phase in soap is really hot. And they always survive that, so the ones I've done have always survived this. So, let's start. This is just the oils, there's no lye in here. I'm going to go ahead and mix the mica in, get it well mixed in there. Once again, there's no lion here. Man, that look at that shimmer. That's beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. All right, so let's get our lion here and get this up to trace, and then we'll talk about the end beds and about the cook and how we go forth. Stand up, don't you dare. All right, let's get our lion there. There are advantages as well as disadvantages between cold and hot process soaps. Um, one advantage with hot process, you don't have to worry about trace because it's going to get thick anyway. And I actually prefer a really hot, thick trace. I'm not too worried about temperatures either. I don't measure. I don't know what this is. I know my oils are pretty hot. I know my lye is pretty hot. It's not really an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Now, Nurture Soap said this may turn orange. Brambleberry has one that turns orange at first, and then it turns back. So far, this is not. Nope, doesn't look like it's going to. So let's bring this up to trace. Yeah, there's a little bit of orange tint to it. Now, technically, that's emulsified. That's up to trace. Like, if this were cold process, I could go ahead and pour it. It's semi-thick. I like my hot process really thick trace because it's going to start to separate anyway when it starts to cook. So I'm going to stick blend some more. That way I know the color is in there well. I know the lye and the oil molecules are well bonded. Yeah, we can see some traces. That's good. Okay. Now, this will start to cook. The crock pot is plugged in. It's on high. Some people say use low. I know this crock pot. I've done it for years. I know it well. It works well on high. Okay, let's talk about our embeds. I have several of these. When I have soap left over making cold process, I pour it into some individual molds. Sometimes I have some muffin molds. I have some sun and moon molds. This is a sun and moon mold. 
And these soaps are perfectly fine. They're fully cured. I've used them. Um, some of them have heavily ashed over. This is the side that's exposed to the air and I spray it with alcohol. This is the side that's down inside the mold, but you see how it heavily ashed over it is? See these? These are just, I mean, they're perfectly fine to use, perfectly fine, but they're just not presentable. I have several of them over here, so while I'm waiting for this to start to cook, I'm gonna go ahead and chop those up and get them ready to put in as embeds. So, we're gonna put the lid on and let this cook start and I will bring you back at the next phase. Okay, I don't really have to do anything here. I just want to show you what's happening. This is where some people vary. Some people say put the lid on, leave it on until it's done. I can't do that. I stir it in between. That's one reason when I do cold process, I like the Brambleberry lie calculator because it does use less water and I usually do a water discount anyway. I like the SoCalc.net calculator when I do hot process because the standard for it has a higher amount of water which I need because I'm losing some while it's cooking but look there you never ever want to leave your hot process unattended see where it's cooked that means it's starting to cook it's going into gel phase right there I don't really have to do anything at this point but I will soon I've got the computer set up here I'm sitting right beside it I'm not going away I'm watching it uh, you got to do that when you make hot process I'll be back Okay, now's the point we're going to have to really, really watch it. Look at this, and you can actually still see it climbing. We're getting ready to get into what's called the applesauce stage. As a matter of fact, we're there. As soon as I stir this clump in the middle and stir these big fluffy, fluffy clouds back down, it has, well, no, we're not quite there. It has the appearance of applesauce, the appearance and texture of applesauce. We're not quite there. Yeah, the center does right there it looks like applesauce so yep actually I may have skipped the applesauce stage because the outside is starting to get to the mashed potato stage in which it looks like mashed potatoes so let me just cover that back up and show you my embeds over here so I went ahead and got my embeds cut up those are all those soaps um, once again, they're perfectly fine. Some of them ashed over. It doesn't hurt anything. It's just appearance. And I keep those just stuck aside for when this happens and I get a bunch of them and I don't want them to go to waste. I make hot process and suspend these in hot process. Um, another advantage to hot process is the wait time. Now, people say you can make hot process mold it a few hours later, cut it, and use it. That is true, and the truth is, I've done that before. Just to prove a point, and it's perfectly fine. The thing is, when it's at that stage, it does still have a lot of water still in it, so it's a soft bar, it's going to dissolve quickly. Virtually every hot process soap I make goes through a full four to six week cure time. This particular batch is not. I'm doing it because I have a lot of these embeds I want to use, but I was off for a couple of weeks and I'm really behind and I need some soap. This particular soap is, I'm going to cut it later this evening and get the video up, but this particular soap is actually still going to sit, cut, exposed to the air for 10 days. In 10 days it'll be perfectly fine. While I have you going, I'm going to stir this one more time because look here. Some people say never do this. I'm just not comfortable with that. This is the mash, the, uh, shoot. <laughs> this is the applesauce stage. That looks like applesauce. So yeah, we're getting ready to start to cook, which means it's turning to soap and we'll be at the mashed potato stage probably in just a few minutes. This is why hot process you never leave unattended. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so it's still climbing a little bit, but it's slowing down, which means that it's the cooking is coming to an end. It's starting to come back together. It's starting to get a little bit glossy, which means it's going into gel phase, which means it's going to be soap in probably just a couple of minutes. Truth is, I probably could stop it right now, but I'm going to play it safe, cook it just a little bit longer. And even if I put it away too soon and it had some lye in it, it'll just continue on like cold process. It's not like it's going to leave lye in there. So anyway, let's talk. Now it looks like mashed potatoes. Of course, they're yellow, but it's got the texture and appearance of mashed potatoes. So we are at the mashed potato stage. 
I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer until it gets a little bit shinier, which means uh, it's cooked. And I'm talking just probably a minute, maybe two at the most. So while we're doing that, let's talk about super fat. So we know super fat, fat left over in your soap is good for your skin. With cold, with hot process, you have two options. With cold process, you just build it into your recipe. With hot process, you can build it into your recipe, which is what I do. I just go ahead and make my recipe, calculate it with 5% super fat. So my super fat's already in there. Some people like to calculate it at 0% super fat, so it's all soap, no residual oils. Then when the cook is over, there's no lye in there. That's when they add their super fat. I have done that before. Shea butter does great. Coconut oil does great. And that way, there's no lye in there attacking those oil molecules. So you have just that pure oil in your soap. I've done it before. Truthfully, I don't notice any difference, and it's really easier to me to just incorporate it into the recipe. That's why I go ahead and just incorporate it into the recipe. I like simple, but I have done it the other way. It works just fine. If you want 5% super fat, you'll just calculate it at your recipe at 0% super fat and then add your 5% in at the end of the cook like I would do that right now. Okay. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but this is shiny, very shiny, which means we're at full gel phase. I'm unplugging the crock pot. It's cooked. So, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down for just a minute. I'm going to get this out of the crock and let it start to cool just a little bit. And we're going to fragrance it, and we'll talk about fragrances, and then we'll put our embeds in and mold it. So, I will be right back. All right, we're back. <clears throat> I like to let it cool down just a little bit before I fragrance it. But when I stir this, I don't know if the camera picks it up, but you see it's very, very shiny, very glossy. It means it's at full gel phase. It is ready. It is ready. Now it's time to put the fragrance in. Okay, fragrances, as we all know, can misbehave. Some of them accelerate trace. Some of them accelerate trace to the point that it's almost unusable. Some of them rice. Um, some of them cause separation. Those fragrances I just avoid in cold process, but those are fine to use in hot process. As a matter of fact, I'm using a combination here of fragrances that cause severe acceleration and one that calls rising. So I'm just I'm using up some old ones. I'm not going to get any more. I've mixed them all together, but acceleration is not an issue. It's already soap. Ricing is already an issue. There's no oil in here other than the super fat, so it's not going to rice on you, okay? It's not going to cause separation because it's already soap. So those fragrances that misbehave like that in cold process are really good to use in hot process. That's another advantage of hot process. So I like to, I probably could just dump this all in and start stirring. I like to kind of pour a little bit of it in, stir it, and fold it. It'll take a while, so you're going to see me stirring some soap for a good while here. And it looks like you got your oils, you know, your fragrance is just floating in it, but your soap will absorb it. But that's one reason I like to kind of pour it in slowly. Start it in the center, and then fold it in. And this is a combination of several different fragrances, but it smells pretty daggone good. And, once again, one of them causes extreme acceleration. Almost, you'd almost consider it seizing. Some people may consider it seizing, which is where it just sets up so hard so fast you can't use it. Not an issue in hot process. And so far I'm really liking this Firefly, Firefly Mica. From nurture soap so thank you lisa and i'll be using some of your others in some upcoming videos i really appreciate that and i do like to use fragrances at the maximum safe i don't exceed the maximum but i do like to use fragrances at the maximum skin safe recommendation So with 50 ounces of oil, this is quite a good bit of fragrance oil. 
but that is the maximum skin safe. I don't exceed it. Okay, that's in. Our batter is still holding up well. Or I should say our soap is holding up well. It's no longer soap batter, it's soap. Let's get our embed stirred in here. Let's get this in the mold. Okay, now putting these cold embeds in, it's going to start to cool it down and make it harder to stir in. That's why I don't like to let it sit and cool down too much. So I got to get work quickly here. I like to try to get them all stirred in, mixed in, all well coated in soap. stir it's setting up on me because of those cold embeds cooling it down so everything's in everything's coated let's get this into the mold so let's get this where you can see down and smear it quite a bit to make sure you get all the air bubbles out. Tap her on the ground. That is why, even though this is soap, that's why you keep your eyes protected because a blob just flew up and hit me in the glasses and thank God I have my glasses on because I made that mistake one time and even though it's soap there's no lie, it burns like acid. sides and once again I'm just really smacking that down just to make sure I get all that in there get all the air bubbles out I'll try and make sure I get all those embeds down into the soap oh yeah even through the glove it's really hot if that blob had hit me in the eye it's still really high pH and it's hot Always protect your eyes when you're making soap. Okay, another advantage, the hot process, there will be no glycerin rivers. It's not an issue in hot process. And I don't have to spray this with rubbing alcohol. There is not going to be any soda ash forming on this. This is all soap, there's no lye left in it. Nothing's gonna happen. Those are a couple of advantages. The quick cure time, the, let's see, the, the fragrance issues, you can use misbehaving fragrances, the quick cure time and use time if you need it. Um, no soda ash, no acceleration, no glycerin rivers, nothing like that. I can't get a pretty top on this. Um, some people may be able to, I can't, so basically I just tap it out, make sure I have all the air bubbles out. Just have a plain top on my soap. All of that left over, we'll talk about that later. That is not going to waste, trust me. So, that's all I have for right now. This is going to have to sit for several hours to cool down and harden up, but I'll be back later when it's time. 
Hi everybody, it's the Soap Man, and four hours later, it's time to cut the soap I made. Now, real truth is, I'm in West Virginia, it's 40 degrees outside. I put this outside where it's cold or cool, and after an hour, I took the silicone liner out of the wooden mold, so it cooled down quickly. So it's ready to cut, so let's go ahead and get our cutter up here. But, oh, guess what happened? Look here, my wire broke. How many of us have done that and our wire broke? I'm going to have to just do simply the best I can to cut this with a knife because I have no choice at this point. Went ahead and scored it. And I'm just going to do the best I can to cut it with a knife. All I have to do is just get it into, into two loaves. So that shouldn't be dreadfully hard. Of course, the, oh, I see already the knife is bending. There we go. Now we're going straight. Now, there we go. Well, I've still messed it up somewhat. So it won't be a perfect neat cut but you know hey it happens good thing is i'm giving this away i'm not selling it so it doesn't matter so anyway yeah look inside there we go this is what my hot process soap looks like okay now let's get our other wire cutter up here to cut this into some bars and see what they look like. Make sure we're up here. Maybe get you just a tad closer. Okay, now that I have everybody's attention, look here. See that little guy? See that little guy right there? That is why we wear our eye protection. I'm doing this as a tutorial, and this is for new soapers, intermediate soapers, and advanced soapers. Protect your eyes. I made the mistake several years ago of making hot process soap, and when I was banging it down on the ground, I thought, oh, it's soap. I don't need my goggles. I took it off, and one of these hit me in the eye. It burned like the devil. I had my goggles on this time and this hit the goggles and thank God I had them on because I would have been screaming and yelling even though it's soap there's no lie in this it's soap soap is still high it still has a high pH and this was very hot I am so glad I had my goggles on protect your eyes folks now let's get to the fun part let's cut the soap Yeah, there we go. These are nice, big, thick, chunky bars. And the yellow that my friend Lisa gave me is holding up beautifully. And it smells good. And part of the fragrance that's in here is also from Lisa. It's one that really accelerated in cold process. Not an issue in hot process. Very nice.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the others off camera because they're going to look relatively the same. Okay, so once again, this is how I do hot process. It's my preferred way to do it. And this is my tutorial. Look at my crock pot. Look at all the soap. Here's on my spatula stuck in the crock pot. This is not going to waste, trust me. I will put all of this in hot water, just hot water from the tap. Let it sit for about an hour, and I'm going to wash dishes with this. Yes, I am going to wash dishes with all this residual soap. It's not going to waste. I oftentimes wash my dishes with my cold process soap. But you know what? That's for another video. Guess what? I have already made a video using 100% tallow to make soap to wash dishes with. I'll eventually show you how I do that, wash the dishes with it, and put that up to the internet, but that's a whole other video. I'll see you in just a little while when we get this uploaded. Alright then, bye.